morning. Um, Ronald's a hard act to follow in L.A. Everybody's very familiar with L.A. So um, Cobb County, we're a little more remote. Um, John, if you can go ahead and start. We are located in Georgia um, with about 755,000 people. We're the third most populous county in Georgia. A little known fact is that tourism is our number one economic driver. Rather unusual with no beaches, no mountains, right? We have a national battlefield, the most visited national battlefield based on a civil war battle in the country, not just in the state. We have our own international airport that saw over 900 flights take off and land during Super Bowl weekend. Three major league teams call Cobb County home. The Census Bureau ranks Cobb County the most educated county in Georgia and among the 12 most educated counties in the country. And why is that important to me? Our citizens are technologically savvy and they expect their local government to provide them the same level of convenience that they experience in their day-to-day -day lives as they go throughout Cobb County. But, as you mentioned, they also expect us to spend their money wisely and to keep their taxes low. A, key principle of our, a couple key principles of our strategy for digital transformation are pretty straightforward in Cobb County. We wanted to build a data-driven decision-making culture across our organization, and then we wanted to provide our services and our information to our constituents anytime, anyplace, and on any device. Our, our, um, our GIS team has been around for quite a while. We brought GIS into the county in 1999, rolled out our first mobile map in 2012. We've evolved into an enterprise GIS, an enterprise GIS where, where we have a team centralized in IT, led by Jennifer Lana, and distributed teams throughout the departments that are spread out across the county. This made GIS the perfect platform for us to leverage, to collaborate across our organizations to do our work better. We found, go ahead, Jenna, go ahead. Oh, sorry, I won't go, okay, all right. We found that there were, um, there, there were really about four pivotal drivers of GIS and location intelligence that allowed us to move our transformation, our digital transformation forward. They were, they were citizen engagement or community engagement. There was data-driven, smart decisions. There was sharing or collaboration of data. And then a big one for us was to gain executive buy-in. Cobb County has a history, Cobb County government, has a history of sharing information with our citizens. Whether it be from this story map which provided information and advised citizens on a proposed millage rate increase, which you know is not popular, and let them know exactly what their money was going to be spent on, the increased revenue, but it also provided a calculator that allowed them to go into the tax site, county tax site, and compute exactly what the impact on their tax rate would be. From that to our open portal, which allows citizens to come in and view and download data. GIS has been a part of that history of communication. But new technologies and capabilities have allowed us to go beyond just communicating our data. They've allowed us to actually place location intelligence out in the communities where our citizens can interact with location intelligence. This video we're getting about ready to share is an, is an example of that. It was a collaboration between our 911 group, our public safety, our DOT, and our parks group. And I'm going to show you this and then we'll talk a little bit more about it. We have signs that are going up on all the trails that are approximately a quarter mile apart. There's two types of signs that they'll see. There's aluminum signs that are a, a square or a rectangle, and then we have car snipe signs that are like the breakaway signs along the Silver Comet Trail and other places where uh, bicyclists or runners may run into them. What you need to know is these are about a quarter mile apart. There's an eight digit number on there that when you call 911, you give that location. It doesn't just show up as a place on a trail, it actually shows up like a home address or a business address, and it puts it on the responder's map on their computer, just like it would my house or your house. 
So that enables the first responder not only to know exactly where to go on the road, but they can find it and look up the address and drive right to it. Going from Smyrna all the way down into Paulding County, that's a long stretch of road. You get out there, you're listening to music and you're not really paying attention. You go down, you're not necessarily gonna know where you are. So when you see that marker, even if it's not you or somebody comes up on you and they're able to get to that marker, it's gonna save so much time and you'll have so much confidence in your experience because the police will be there so much faster. If it's not directly on the road or accessible, there's gonna be notes embedded into that call that tell the officer, park here, walk down the trail, turn right, and it'll take you to that location marker. So it's gonna enhance the response time for fire, uh, police department, and the ambulance service dramatically. We're gonna find for people who need help a lot faster now. We've had officers and firefighters that have had to walk up to two miles carrying someone on a stretcher, and that was just a wake-up call for us that this was desperately needed. Thank you. We're pretty proud of this. Um, this actually uses a U.S. national grid, so if our citizens go outside, if they come to California, because I know California uses the same grid, um, if they come to California, wherever they go, they're familiar with this, and they know now that it brings emergency help quickly. Um, I'm fascinated by the fact that if one of our trailheads is not the entry point, and it happens to be a cul-de-sac, the notes to our 911, because it's linked to our 911 and our public safety officers, the notes actually say, go park on cul-de-sac such and such and John Smith's house. He has a trail he's built down to the, to the Cobb County Trail. So um, take that, bring the stretcher up there. Very interesting to me. So um, transparency and, and engagement and interaction with citizens, expect the best. Those are principles. If you attend any public meeting in Cobb County, you'll hear the commissioners and the, and the chairman convey frequently. We use GIS to help us carry out those principles. This is another example where our emergency management agency is collaborating with citizens and uses citizens through collector and survey one, two, three, to actually assess the damage in the county following either a small storm, whether it be wind damage and trees down, all the way to our infamous 2014 Snowmageddon, and we did not just have two inches of snow. Um, but um, but we, all of that, that we collect here. Um, go ahead. You and I, and I think you mentioned this, have access to a wider variety and more data than ever before. At Cobb County, we use dashboards to help us evaluate and share that data and collaborate, uh, collaborate across the organizations. This dashboard is one we created for fire. The inputs into this are our fire RMS, our 911 system, the municipality of Marietta's data from their RMS system, our AVL, our vehicle locator information, and I believe we also have on there some of the CAD information. So what this does, this actually replaced a process, a very manually intensive process where two people used a map on a wall and stick pins to track where the fire vehicles and, and life response vehicles went throughout the county. On this now, and this isn't live, um, and I've blacked out names, but on this you see live events as they occur from our 911 feed. And on the right, you see the availability of the fire and advanced life support units. If you zoom into the map, which you can't do right now, this is a slide, if you zoom into the map, you'll see the vehicles traveling along to, to the routes where the active fires are. Perhaps the more important part of this is that this provides additional data to our decision makers where they can quickly glance at the circles and determine whether a fire station has availability for fire or availability for advanced life support and redirect their resources accordingly. It also is available, and this is even key, to every firefighter in the field. This is another dashboard that was created in Super Bowl 53 recently. You'll see that police and the emergency management agency layers were added 
But to me, the most impressive thing about this dashboard is in the FIRE dashboard, the IT group and GIS had to facilitate, and I should say actually drag, the agencies together to share their data and pull it into that map. In this dashboard, the agencies themselves contacted each other, identified the data they needed, built the dashboard, and only involved my team to connect to the data sources and when they needed additional technical resources. This evolution of our geospatial platforms and our, and our location intelligence tools being used by the actual SMEs, or subject matter experts, and operational units in the field is continuing to increase in Cobb County. These other two maps, or these other two maps that we used during the um, Super Bowl, the one on the left, well, I think it shows up there on the left, the one on the left is actually all the events that occurred in Cobb County. The um, Super Bowl is a very big revenue generator for Cobb County as well, as we're on the outskirts of Atlanta. Um, and then on the right, what you see is during the Super Bowl, the tracking of all of our police officers. This was actually done with an um, Esri tracker app, and I think someone will speak about that a little bit more later. But why that was important to us, we lent the, some of our police officers to Atlanta. Our chief, of police, our chief of police was concerned that with them outside of our realm of our 800 megahertz radios where we could identify where they were and in areas where they were not as familiar with and where they didn't have the backing of the force behind them very quickly to get there, that he wanted to know exactly where they were every minute during that weekend. And we used the Esri Tracker app for that. Whoa. In, in, in April of 2013, the Atlanta Braves announced that they were moving from Turner Field to a 60-acre plot in Cobb County. And they announced that they were going to have it built and open for the first game of 2017, 30 short months later. To make it even more interesting, they determined they were going to put a small city around the stadium to bring in more, more citizens and more economic revenue. Our GIS team was engaged in every detail of this build, from contour maps to aerial maps to mapping water lines and mapping gas pipelines to developing and automating permitting and, and um, investigate, not investigative, permitting and uh, inspection processes. We were with them the entire step away. I don't believe um, that we would probably have been able to hit this 30-month date should they not have been involved. But on November, April, yeah, on April 14th, sorry, <laughs> on April 14th, you think I know I was there, but on April 14th, 2017, I attended the first Braves game in SunTrust Park. But more impressive than that 30-month build, um, this was our biggest public-private partnership in Cobb County, ever, ever. Um, it was also probably the most ambitious build for Major League Baseball history. And that's impressive, but what's more impressive about that is that we were able to do it using GIS, the intelligence and the efficiencies provided by GIS, without breaking any of our regulations or changing our regulations or breaking any of our permitting requirements. That area around the stadium has become one of our most, our biggest economic development areas. We have hotels, high-rises, office parks, all going up around that area. In 2018, we built and used a 3D model to build a digital twin of that area that commissioners and leaders could use for zoning and development decisions. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Okay. Our community development department took that a step further, and they are mapping, they're building a 3D map of the entire county so that we'll not only have a digital twin of our most productive economic area right now, but also the entire county. That came in really handy for me when about a month ago, our newest commissioner mentioned to me that she wished she could see what a zoning project would look like where the builder intended 
to take down the trees. I went to Jen, Jen went to community development, and here you see the avenue and a local, an outdoor mall that we have in Cobb County. The, the picture doesn't do it justice, guys. This actually is an interactive, you can move around, 3D model, look from different views. And ComDev, taking it a step further, as they always do, actually even provided the capability for the commissioner to see this at any time of the day so she could see the shadowing of where the trees were, what it looked like with all of that. I've talked about the Braves and the building of the stadium, but opening day prevent, presented a whole new set of challenges for us in Cobb County. With parking located 360 degrees around the stadium, an already congested area had the potential to become gridlocked. Lieutenant J.D. Lorenz, who you see in this picture, had the responsibility to develop a traffic management plan that was so detailed that every placement of the cone, every placement of a police car, and every location an officer was to stand was mapped out. Our intent was to seat every fan by first pitch and to totally return the area to normal traffic conditions within 45 minutes after the game. On the left, the, uh, we are doing it, guys. I get home in 30 minutes from the game. Um, <laughs> Um, nobody expected it. It was a total surprise. It took away the complaint area that, that everybody was planning on coming to the games with, our little cup people. Um, on the left here, you'll see the shared ridership area. On the right, you see on our digital twin an elevated pedestrian bridge where fans cross, to, cross 75, one of our busiest intersections, to get to the parking lot. When they get to the base of the bridge, and you'll see this on the highest left picture in the, in the left top, they have to cross diagonally across the road to reach the garages. This presented a queuing issue with our traffic. The traffic began to back up at this intersection, which then further backed up intersections at this. I mentioned, if you, did, if you heard, this is along the um, I-75 and 285 corridor. So that backed up intersections along the, the corridor. Lieutenant Lorenz needed a way to determine the, the best signal timing based on pedestrian volume that would allow him to get the traffic moving and the pedestrians across. We used IBM Watson and the video footage from our traffic cameras to, um, to classify pedestrian um, density. This dashboard was his answer. Our intelligent traffic management system allows the traffic manager at the scene to actually override our smart traffic lights, which were designed for vehicle traffic, and stop traffic in all directions. He was able to successfully stop traffic and allow pedestrians to cross diagonally. It's a, it's, a, it's a thing of beauty if you look at this thing down on the left. I've actually been there um, and gone out to that parking garage, and although that's not where I like to park, but, um, but, um, but it's a thing of beauty. And then he's able to use this dashboard to train other traffic management officers so that he can take a day off during the season. Cobb is a ways citizen-connected partner. We provide authoritative information to Waze on construction and road closures. In return, we get a wealth of information on traffic jams, traffic accidents, and unexpected road closures. Here, you see our traffic management center engineers monitoring our traffic light feeds and our Waze dashboard on the right. DOT is one of our most advanced GIS users. As they develop their new 20-year intelligent tra transportation, I always say traffic, and they say, no, it's transportation. As they, as they develop their, intel uh, their next 20-year intelligent transportation management system plan, they are building the infrastructure to be able to handle autonomous vehicles. Using BI, new capabilities in SCATs, our Blue Toad and GIS 
They are planning for the future. But DOT isn't just monitoring our roads. They want to make our roads better. The analysis on these slides, done by Lynn Biggs, our GIS manager at DOT, actually looks at and, and does that. This is three years' worth of accident reports in Cobb County on accidents that occurred where there no other vehicles, only one single vehicle were involved, and then the vehicle went off the road and hit a fixed object. So they're fixed object crashes is what they are. DOT had a hunch that there were factors influencing these crashes that were not mapped on our GIS road layer. So Esri worked with us, and they identified and mapped slopes and curve attributes onto our road layer. That, the resulting data, has allowed us to target finite transportation dollars, not just at locations, but at specific improvement projects that can address these, these incidents. Insights. Jack mentioned insights. Insights has been a platform that is changing our user base of GIS in Cobb County. And you'll see what I mean when I talk about this. This is Felicia Lingu. She is a public health specialist in our senior services group. Her, one of her responsibilities, and we, well, first, we have, five, we have five senior centers located in Cobb County throughout and spread out. You'll see them on, with, as the diamonds on these, on these charts. Um, one of Felicia's roles is to inform others how these centers are impacting the lives of seniors and senior adults in our community. Last year, Felicia attended one of the GIS courses offered by our GIS team. One of the, well, the Insight courses, sorry, offered by our GIS team. She immediately realized that that tool and that platform would allow her to do exactly that, to communicate that information quickly and easily to her her bosses and to the public. So we have we have very um, we have well very proactive, very good services at our service centers or our senior centers in Cobb County. So our our attendees or seniors come from all over the metro Atlanta area, not just Cobb County. Felicia was curious where they were coming from, and the Insights platform allowed her to explore the relationship between our seniors and the centers. Um, in the platform, she could change it and focus on the seniors. She could change it and focus on the, the centers themselves. And so um, this, this analysis allowed her to evaluate and provide to our commissioners, especially those who do not have a senior center in their area, the evidence that their seniors were actually attending some of our other facilities. We also um, want to Im increase our participation in our senior centers. And so the staff at the senior centers wanted to look at what activities were successful. You'll see here in the left in the yellow, those are games. Quite expectedly, games are our most popular um, activities that we have at the senior centers. But we're also able to see that bingo is the most popular activity that we have. So go figure, go figure. But on the right, even though, um, in the right chart, you can flip one more up, Jen. Yeah, in the right chart here, you'll see the little blue dot. It's hard to see on this slide up here, this, this small, but the little blue dot is an outlier in the social category. So Felicia wanted to see what was happening there. So she used Insights, went in and looked. And our West Cobb Senior Center had a very successful event called Today, Tomorrow, and Always, Patsy Klein. So <laughs> that I do understand. No. <laughs> Um, so um, so, so our, this platform, Felicia has continued to be one of our most avid users of GIS. She's continued to use Insights to further investigate the patterns and what's going on at the senior centers. And it has allowed us and is going to allow us further to target our underserved populations. If for, as for example, very, our, we have a lot less men who come to these senior centers than we have women. We also know that although 55 and above can come to the senior centers, we have an underserved range there. We have those from 55 to 65 that don't really use the centers, and they've got lots of things there for them to use. 
So Felicia is also taking her knowledge of this and expanding it to the other, agent, or the other departments in the public services agencies. Those would be elections, those would be libraries, um, that would be parks. So, and it's falling off again. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I think so. All right. All right. So, becoming a smart community, which we've been trying to do, is a journey. It's not, it, there's no recipe. But to become a smart community, we have to put priority on digital transformation. Executive engagement is key. GIS has been the platform with the wow factor that has allowed us to bring digital transformation to the forefront and make it a priority. Because GIS allows us to rapidly and quickly respond to a multitude of issues and changes, and the presentation layer is so variable, there's so many variable ways to present and, and is so clear in conveying the results, it has gained the attention of our executives and senior leaders at Cobb County. We presented at the plenary session last year at the 2018 International User Conference. Eight of our executives, my level or above, were at the conference, including, as you see seated here, the chief of police, the public safety director, and one of our district commissioners. And we, myself and the team, we love the fact that they were there to support us, but even better is that by their attendance and more impactful, they brought back to our GIS teams ideas and projects to implement across the county that would improve our services to our citizens. I also love that they like GIS, but the bigger impact for me as a CIO is that GIS, by gaining their attention, has also made it so they are much more receptive and aware of how digital transformation as a whole has the, is and can impact our county. So it helps me in gaining and getting other projects approved through the Board of Commissioners. I'm throwing this up here because when we were at the plenary session last year, I talked about getting how you get, we talked about how you get executive engagement, your commissioners on board. And we talked about, it was, we, had, we had things that drew their interest. But you know, we've, we've evolved beyond that at Cobb County, as you saw from the commissioner who used the 3D diagram. But also this, I, I throw this up here, because this was built, this mobile map was built by one of our commissioners, the one who attended the, the um, Esri user conference last year. He wanted to document his goal of driving every county road in his district. And he's even taken it a step further and used the collector app and integrated it. And as he goes out, he marks the potholes. His next step that he plans to do is to integrate with Cartograph, our DOT work order management system. Now, could we have built that for him? Absolutely. But that's that wow factor I'm talking about. When we gain endorsement for GIS and IT platforms, they want to be engaged. They want to be involved in what we're doing. So our, our, our road to becoming a smart city, and becoming a smart city has had a lot of impacts on the county. But this artist rendering um, of the Thyssenkrupp building, which is a um, elevator building, elevator testing building, going up and down around the Cumberland area, is one that probably indicates the one that brings in the most revenue and jobs for our citizens. Smart communities attract smart businesses. Thyssenkrupp is the area the smart, where smart elevators will be tested and built in this building for Thyssenkrupp. Additionally, the Comcast farm, which is their center for innovation, and GE, GE's um, Electric Technology Center of Excellence also have moved into Cobb County. So what next for us as we, as we continue our journey of digital transformation? 
I would tell you, who knows? Um, I think as we move more and more towards where our SMEs and our operational users use our platforms to solve issues they are encountering and to build ideas that they have because they are out there where things are happening with our citizens, that the possibilities are endless. This year, we plan to allow and build a platform and expand our platform to allow citizens to actually engage with GIS and, and build ideas for us. I think... I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, guys. It's the hair. Um, <laughs> I can't do this. I, I think that will um, expand our possibilities even further. As a CIO, I see my role as providing the technology, the tools, and the capabilities to allow them to implement those ideas and to be ready for that. So what do I have planned for us to do that? We want to expand our 3D modeling. That's been a very, a very productive thing for us. We want to expand that. AI and business intelligence. DOT is just staying so far ahead of... We're running to keep up with where DOT wants to go. Um, we brought in a new geo event server this year, and that's what they actually used to do the uh, analysis you saw earlier. We plan to expand on that. Um, in building mapping, I was so glad to see that. I've been being asked for that for two years, and I've been out looking for um, an application that would do that. I, just, just last week, I had the support services um, agency head ask me if we would be able to map as they built the new police headquarters and the new police training facility. And that same commissioner, as he was giving me his application to show out here, said, wouldn't it be really cool, this is in his district, by the way, wouldn't it be really cool if we could map the inside of that building? It's our first real high-rise or skyscraper in Cobb County as our tallest building. We haven't fought fires there before, guys. And so we need to map that. Um, Jen and I have been looking at... Um, at the, the you know, virtual reality and augmented reality. You know, if we can combine those to help our public safety groups respond to things that are new for them, that would just be, be fantastic for us. So it's exciting times. I'm, I'm extremely excited about the ideas. I mean, it, the possibilities are endless for us. i um, really excited about it. Um, you say you love your job. Mine's the best one I've ever had. Um, so I, I do as well. But thank you for letting me um, talk um, this morning about our, my team in Cobb County. It's something I love to do. I'm very proud of them. Um, so thank you very much.